What's up, guys? My name is Patrick. We This is, I think, the fourth official live stream that we've done. Oh, there it is. It's trippy. I got this up on my YouTube to make sure it's running, and it's running. It's like Inception going on right now. Anyways, uh, thanks for joining. We're making some food today, of course. Uh, as the div digital chef, what else will we make? So uh, I've been talking to some of the people on the Discord. Of course, shout out Perp. Um... Yes, what up, uh, Pom Pom Stew? What's good? Uh, and we got some ideas today. Also, if you guys hear me talking to people, I am on the Discord, my Discord. 
uh, per usual when I stream. So if you are interested, I believe the link is in the description of this video to join that. Um, and so that's a much more immersive experience usually. So uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Um, first off, let me ask if you guys can hear me. Can you guys hear the people in the Discord? You shouldn't be able to hear the Discord people, but you should be able to hear me. And uh, we will get ready in a second now. Yes. Yes. Also, this ZBrush live stream is dedicated to my friend Jason or Perp's late friend who has passed, so dedicated to him. Of course. Um, so we're thinking of doing some kind of ravioli. Appreciate it, Jace. Uh, some ravioli inspired renders. I'm gonna go into the uh, tablet view here. You can see, maybe I can move this PRF document up here. Um, yeah, so let me know what you guys are thinking. Uh, something in between or inspired by uh, these kind of uh, delectable plates. Last time we actually made a uh, Pokeball, Pokeball, uh, where it was kind of a cross between a Pokemon ball and a Pokeball. And uh, this is a much more traditional type of dish. I feel like it could be, can't go wrong with good ravioli. Uh, I'm undecided whether I wanna make it like a cheese thing or more of like a red sauce. But either way, I think we'd have some fun making these different types of uh, kind of meshes here and then making a bunch of them and figuring out how we can overlap them together. And uh, yeah, figure out what kind of bowl we want as well. So, and maybe even have one with a cross section cut open. So if you guys are cool with that, I think we can uh, kind of get going here. Let's do it to it. Nice. Okay. This music's kind of loud in my ears, but how, does the music sound good on YouTube? I don't know if you guys can hear that, but yeah. Let's grab this out and let's get cooking. Of course, we got the cold brew out. Of course. Window, how are you feeling? Pretty good. <clears throat> Did you say you had the surgery yet? Or are you not yet? Oh, lit. Okay, cool. Got it. So you're feeling better though. Morning, Eva. <laughs> yes i just want to clarify again for the people on youtube twitter streaming if you hear me laughing or talking or just saying random stuff there are people i'm talking to on the discord i'm not crazy <clears throat> you know what and even if i was talking to myself i'm not crazy okay they're they're saying i am crazy okay specifically Eva. just kidding we love Eva. Eva is the best person in the discord okay Matthew H. Hello. We're doing... Morning, morning. We're doing the uh, ravioli today. So let's get started. Let's start with a cube, because why not? Seems to be the most ravioli-ish shape if we're going with the classic style. I'm going to drag this down on the Y. Oh, you sent more references? Oh. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we have a bunch here. Let me grab these. There you go. Let's go over here. Yeah, thank you to the peeps on the Discord. We have a bunch of different references here. Wait, is this like the same photo shoot? <laughs> Uh, let's go over here. Ravioli and appreciation. That's so random. <laughs> so random. Okay. Uh, your face looks like ravioli. Never forget it. That's a good thing. Uh, yes. Okay. Appreciate that, Jace. Music is good on YouTube. All right. Start with the square. This uh, is a very simple 
model I think we'll be making starting somewhere simple, so that's good. Uh, right off the bat, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. We're just gonna go ahead here and dynamesh this thing because we don't need any of these weird faces. 128 looks fine, but we're gonna make this smaller so our resolution appears a little bit more manageable. Uh, we're also going to slim this down just a little bit. Boom, perfect. Or I should say perfect. Um, and then I'm going to actually use the BM, and I believe it's N for the Move Infinite brush. And I'm gonna turn on symmetry by hitting X. Let's go to Y as well. Nope, not Y, sorry. I just missed this up. Z. And then we have a little bit more uh, handles to work with here. So the infinite brush allows us to move infinitely, uh, as you can see. So we're not going to be with the other move brushes. You're only able to move kind of like a little snippet of what you're grabbing on. And that's not what we want. So we want the move infinite depth and just kind of do what it looks like. Boom. Kind of depends on how many uh, ridges you want, but for the most part, I think. Uh... Actually, what do the corners look like? Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Let me down on my ship. I think I know what you're talking about. That's hilarious. <laughs> The Discordians are making the claim that this looks like a Super Mario character. There we go. Again, with food, you never have to be totally uh, realistic uh, as far as, or not realistic, um, perfect. Call that flossum. And that looks fine. Let's redynamesh it. Thank you, Lee Design, whoever you are. I feel like that's someone in the Discord. Um, let's go here and where are we at? I think we're good so far. Um, and then we're, we gotta consider the uh, kind of the puffed out part. So there's ways you can probably be more textbook about some of these, but since this whole thing's gonna be wrapped in like a subsurface scattering material later on, I'm not too concerned about where the poly groups are or anything like that, but there's always room to like take like a mask rectangle um, and maybe poly group stuff for the future, future proof this. And what you can do is uh, poly group these. And then when you're ever in one of these modes and you hit the uh, hold down control and tap on one of the poly groups, it'll select those. So let's select this and mask out the other poly groups. That's good because if we want to do stuff like inflate balloon, we're getting this like, uh, you know, pillow like, what you call it? Uh, ravioli. Yes. And then once you do that, you can unmask everything, and then do another inflate balloon, and it bevels out everything else. Um, kind of like that. Except looking at this, I feel like maybe a regular plate. Yeah. Just like that. Redynamesh. And that gives you like the basic shape. Um, and then it just comes down to how perfect you want these. So what I would do after this, let's just go half. And then when you dynamic subdivision, it should give you like a very smooth uh, result here. So that looks like a good test ravioli that we have here right off the bat. Boom. Oh my god, Jace just said on YouTube, save defile in Eva's voice. It's becoming a worldwide phenomenon. Okay. Bring these out a little bit more. Yep. 
Oh, that's actually right. Let me save the file. Or save dev file. So daily's current. 08 I hope I spelled that right. Boom. Okay, cool. I'm going to dynamesh this a little bit of a higher resolution. This music actually, I'm not bad with. I'm not doing this. This is too crazy. Hey, thank you, window. Let's see what we got here. Ravioli and appreciation. That's hilarious. Damn. Okay. Lit. Okay, cool. Um, save the file. <laughs> okay, cool. Looking good here. Let me do a little bit more damage control. Let's go like a damn standard brush. Again, I still have symmetry on because I feel like it's not that big of a deal to not have symmetry on at this point. So just making a little bit of extra indentations. Um, and the more kind of weird indentations you have, I feel like the more realistic. I'm going to take the move brush and I'm actually going to turn on the Y to give us like a flexibility here uh, that will move on both sides. Just making sure this axis is correct. There we go. Make this a little bit more circular. Let me smooth out a little bit. Again, I feel like with food, a lot of the times, the more random it looks, the more realistic. Instead of it being so perfect, which is kind of why I like food more than making other stuff. Oh, really? Interesting. Actually, that makes sense looking at this one. Cool. We've got a good point that was just brought up that on one side, ravioli is usually flatter since I guess it's laying down. Is that why? Cool. Easy enough. We'll just mask out this side. Oops. Mask out this. Yes. And then maybe we'll take the contrast slider down a few times. Oh, wow. Notice I have the uh, Sculptress Pro mode. Since we do have a kind of a higher resolution mesh right now, the Sculptress Pro will allow us to kind of eat away at these subdivisions more. Back to the other side. You can actually see in this view much better what it does. It like changes the now this song I can jam with. I don't know if you guys are listening to this, but yeah. Peeps on YouTube and Twitter can hear quite the vibe. Would you say that looks correct? ambiguous stroke I'm glad that they can't hear you <laughs> should I have them like sitting on a plate like this or should I have them floating in like an abstract still life 
On a plate? Okay. Got it, got it, got it. Hey, yo. What kind of plate? This being the most simple kind of plate. Um, there's this kind of thing. There's a regular plate. There's this kind of thing. So whatever we're thinking. Eva, I'll let you take the reins. <clears throat> oh, with like the specs. Interesting. Um, I think I remember maybe. It says sussy. Oh, saucy. Oh, okay, okay. Got it, got it. I was like, wait, yo. Okay. Okay. All right. So this looks good for one of the pieces. However, it needs to be cut down in geometry. So let's see, remesh this half. Again, my symmetry is off. So I think that's totally fine. We're at 78,000 active points. Maybe we'll try to take this like 10 to 20,000. Usually depending on how many elements there are in a scene. Like if there's like 150 noodles, I wouldn't want those to be past a certain level. Maybe one to 3,000, depending on your computer as well. But if it's something where there's only like a few, I can kind of afford to have a lot more points and show some more detail within the mesh. So already we're at 37, let's try one more time. Maybe keeping groups and taking smooth group style, which will keep the structural integrity a little bit more, but just change the way the topology is mapped onto the mesh. Almost done here, this should take us down to like 20,000 maybe? See how that guesses. Ooh, 17,000. Okay, cool. Like, this looks fine to me, especially knowing what this is going to be. Um, yeah, I think this is fine. So. Uh, I still am not clear on which kind of plate we're using, so... Or at least the model of the plate. Was it like any of these, Eva? I'm gonna save the file. this then oh. we're gonna make a simple plate then let's go with mm. how do you think I'd go about that plate or you mean sphere or a circle we're gonna go sphere because the bowl is pretty much already cut out for us. It's literally right here. So all we need to do, because I'm giving you an exercise. Um, we're just gonna hide. Ooh. Morning, John. Just gonna remesh this. We are live on ZBrush. Oh, wait. I'm just gonna delete this sphere because I think starting with a fresh one might help us in this specific case. So let's go with the sphere. Let's trim about this. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, let's go over here. But also, we wanna have this thing be. Yeah, 
Oh my god. Delete hidden. Make sure we delete hidden. Um, cool. Actually, hold up. So we delete hidden. I think what we want to do now is slice this. Let's go slice curve. Because we want this part that we slice to be uh, what? So we can see we have a little bit of uh, green here. If we just select the green and we move this axis by holding on Alt to the very top, we can flatten this out. Now we have kind of a flat area here. But just to smooth it out a little bit, we're going to go zero mesh keep groups. Smooth groups to zero. Boom. Now we've just hit D. If it's in thickness, get rid of post sub div segments to about two. And we have a nice plate. And Eva has uh, made it very apparent to me that we are saving the file. So we're going to go ahead, Control S here. Save the file because we don't want to uh, erase what we've already worked on. Duh. <laughs> Perp, that's because you didn't save your file. I told you. Yeah, alrighty then. Cool. I think that works. Uh, and then if you wanted this edge to be a little bit harsher, like I guess our references, all you gotta do is take this segment from two to three. Boom. And we should be good there. if I like that or not. What, the regular? Maybe a little bit of both. So maybe like that. Um, and so here is where I might use like a little bit of collision then. So, I think honestly, let me see if I can one more. Get rid of those spaces. See what happens. Eh. Oh wait, this is upside down. Wow. That's interesting. Uh, but I think actually, that's fine. We're at eight eighty nine hundred uh, active points, which is totally fine. Shiny Minion, what you got going on? Taking Maddie for a walk. How much active point on that pasta? Oh, yes. Right now, currently 8,900. Um, oh, nice. Uh, bro, is there any? Is there a way I can select a certain color to apply to a subtool or part of a subtool? Uh, do you mean poly group or just straight up color? If you're talking about color, I believe you can just go color, fill object. Um, but if you're talking about poly group, uh, you can just shift F will show you the poly group that your subtool is currently on and then just control W to change the poly group. Or if you want to make part of the mesh a poly group, you can just like mask poly group. So there's just different ways to uh, do that. Hopefully that helps. Uh, for the time being, I believe I'm going to um, enable dynamic subdiv just for the time being. Uh, and the only thing that it's giving is two iterations of smoothness, which is exactly what we're going for. And we're going to go dynamics, self collision to floor collision zero, firmness five, and collision volume. And now we go BTC, oops, BTC, which will be the cloth transpose. We can just move this down and you can see kind of what happens when uh, you kind of collide with stuff. Um, but if you, for something like this, that has more of a puffed out shape, you might want to even enable inflate, uh, which will give it kind of like a, 
See how it kind of inflates back up when you move it? Yeah. Um, we can mess with that. Usually this works better when you have less polygons on the surface, otherwise it kind of crunches up like that. So let's take the firmness to six, inflate off, um, of collision to three, recalculate. Yeah, so sometimes it's not the move. Yeah, I think that should be. Yeah, for this example, because we have too many, it's because of the ridges, why we need to have a certain amount of polygons. Uh, so we're actually going to, I just want to show you guys how that works. Let's take that off, collision volume off, we don't have to worry about that. And then just go to the regular transpose tool, BTR. And then, I move this stuff down. Let me see if I can, I don't know where this hits the ground, but. And because we don't have any subdivision levels, um, we can just start, uh, I guess let me s duplicate this, hide. I was like saving my tracks. Then go over here maybe, hold down control. You can technically hold down control and then wherever you want the distance for the copy to be, you can release control and just do something like that. Really easy way to fill this stuff up and then, you can uh, auto group and everybody, every one of these things will have a different uh, color. So it'll, it's easy to mask later. So if you take your brush really high, and just start moving, holding alt, you can move on the normal. So it's really easy to uh, kind of finesse these things around a little bit, make them a little bit. And because we have a big brush, it's only gonna distort these things on like a bigger scale. Instead of having a small one and you're like bending these. Um, but the move, topological brush i believe that i'm on uh will allow you to move things in the same sub tool just based on the mesh so that's kind of what we're going for here so really roughly just maybe in this case make it look like it's creeping up over the edge like that. again doing a rough job at this point but you'll get the idea also in this case if we don't want to make crazy deformations to the mesh like this, we can actually enable geometry, proxy pose, and slide this all the way up to where we have just little blobs of colors. Um, it's one nice ravioli. Appreciate that, Anthony. You always make food related in ZBrush or it's just your topic for today? Uh, pretty much always for the, for the past like year or two, I feel like. Um, yeah, that's why the segment's called Cooking with Patrick Forty. I guess that wouldn't really make as much sense if I was making like characters and stuff, but yeah, I enjoy making food. Much better than I can cook in real life. I'll put it that way. Okay, and Eva's laughing. Um, yeah. What? True. So now we're literally just kind of finessing these colors. And if you, this is where having a good feel of ZBrush will work in your favor. Um, just knowing how to move things around uh, without, you know, getting confused on how to move these things. Like right now, we're just moving blobs. It's as simple as you can get. Blobby mignons. That's what it's all about. Just making sure nothing's peeking, hoping it's set out. Go to every kind of uh, level here. Like that. Oops. Huh? Oh, true, 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 true. Yes, we also need to rotate these. Um, it's a good call. So we hit W and just hold down Control and tap. We can actually just easily start rotating these things if you want to uh, 
center this. Boom. And then we'll do a little bit of damage control. Yeah, that wasn't too hard. The other pro of having these all-in-one subtools is when you're adding sauce, it makes a lot of sense. Um, could just use cloths, sim, let them fall physically. You could do that. Um, it helps when they're much lower, uh, at least with ZBrush's cloth sim, to prevent a, a ton of wrinkles and small little and fragments that wouldn't really normally be on something like ravioli. Uh, you'd have to have a very few meta polygons, and with the ridges that we have, it's a little bit tough to make that work. You probably could still make it work, um, but I did go over that uh, a few minutes ago before we started doing it this way. But like anything else, you have more control when you kind of brute force things, and when you don't have an, a lot of geometry, the brute force is a little bit less painful. And all the detail we have in these is still being retained, even though it's been a while since we've seen it. I feel like uh, this music fits perfectly with this Italian guitar. I don't know what kind of music this is, but... Cool. So if you want to see what happens, uh, proxy pose, turn that off. And now we have this uh, ravioli here in a very nice fashion. We have a plate of ravioli and it's only taken about we've been streaming for 38 minutes. Already 38 minutes? Okay. Can we rotate objects using brush? Uh, Bi-weekly render challenge in the... Ooh! Jace is correct. Bi-weekly render challenge in the Patrick 40 Discord peeps. Don't miss out. That is true. Our next one is on the... Let's see. August 31st at 6.45 p.m., which will probably start around 7 p.m. Eastern. So uh, that's a fun little event where we kind of all just meet up in the Discord, much like we are right now, and everybody streams their screen. We will spin a wheel, uh, and depending on the two things that we land, we combine those subjects and then make a fun render or 3D or drawing, whatever. It doesn't matter what medium. And then we pick the... Uh, then we just submit them into the chats and then we go over each one of them. It's pretty fun. It's kind of like a mixture of art school and Xbox Live. I don't know. It's like you're critiquing things, but it's like a fun vibe. <clears throat> so yeah. Can we rotate objects using brush? Um, unless that, I just covered that. Uh, I don't think so. There's like a whole, you know, if that's what you mean. And then depending on what you're trying to rotate, that's something like that, that's what you mean. The proxy pose real quick and just... looking for any kind of weird oh eva says save def file so we're gonna save def file um here in argentina we call that raviolis how do you call that yeah ravioli yep minus the s i believe i think i don't know i should know that save the file cool that's looking good you're not getting anything poking from the back what's this one Damage to control. Cool. Um, the next thing we'll want to do is if we want to see some standing water and sauce, this will probably be two separate mes meshes. Um, let me just look at some of these references here. Yeah. <laughs> you had the ketchup and ZBrush too? Yes, even though it's not ketchup. But yes, we will be doing 
the adding of the ketchup. And by ketchup, I mean red sauce. Or white sauce, depends on. Yeah, it depends on uh, what I decide to texture these like, which um, typically with the ZBrush live streams, I will be streaming the ZBrush portion of this on here. And then later on, either today or tomorrow or something like that, I'll be streaming via Discord the Cinema 4D portion. Ooh, vodka sauce, he says. Yummy. That's a good idea. Yum. Okay. So let's get to it. Uh, for something like this, where we have standing water, I kind of like that, or standing whatever sauce, uh, we can add a little bit of realism by going to this bowl. Let's uh, duplicate the bowl just because we're about to collapse it. Let's go. There we go. Dynamic subdivision apply. So now this geometry is applied. We're going to take this red portion. Actually, before we do that, we're going to duplicate. Now select the red portion. That's all we're selected. Delete lower. And delete hidden. The delete hidden is usually in the geometry, modify topology, delete hidden. So if you ever have a uh, portion of your mesh that is hidden from view and you want to get rid of that, for instance, because we want to close holes and use the plate geometry as building blocks for the sauce, that would be a good time. So I'm going to go over here and your mesh, half. Let's get some better topology here. Cool. Now we're going to go, and I believe it's also in the, or no, in the display, display properties, flip the normals. So now we're seeing the normals on the bottom here. That's what we want because we're actually going to be closing holes, which is also in the modified topology. So if you'll see, it's a very, very thin layer of liquid here, which probably not probably want a little bit more liquid. So what I can do is just inflate this a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. And then we're going to go and there we go. So we still have thickness, which is really what we want with any kind of standing water. But As long as this isn't bleeding out the edge, that's fine. But this is essentially what we want. Just some kind of geometry that has thickness that's bleeding over the edge of the plate, which we can use as the liquid. Looks good to me. Uh, now we'll take care of that sauce. This is about as uh, self-explanatory as it gets. We're just gonna go here and I'm trying to think. Let me see. There's not really any falling on the plate on this. This the way I would do this depends on whether I want the sauce to be falling on the plate or just on the noodles. Like this looks like it's just hitting the noodles. Um, there's some where the hits the plate. This is kind of just on the noodles. What are we thinking? Eva, your call. Oh yeah, do you think the sauce should be uh, just kind of on drizzled on top of the noodles or also hitting the plate like, because this one I feel like it's only hitting the noodles for the most part. This one's only hitting the noodles or should it be on the plate? Okay. Okay, I was making our life a little bit harder. Let's do this. Um, let's go and, okay, she said you're welcome. Let's go over here. Maybe swivel this around. Let's add a couple more raviolis. Auto groups again.
What? Looks good to me. And then we have 152,000 active points, which really isn't that bad considering the whole plate is that. What's up, Victor? Good morning. Where is the lamb sauce? Ooh, that's a good idea. Surrender of choice. I use Octane for the most part, um, but I feel like it's, you know, I've always just used Octane. That looks good. Uh, now this is the part where I would save uh, real quick. And uh, because we want to mask stuff for the sauce for everything, let's go ZBrush plugin, Transpose Master, T Pose Mesh, which is usually used for character stuff. Um, but we're going to use this for something else. Let's add a subdivision level. Let's go to Mask Curve Time. And then this radius right here will have to do with the thickness of the mask. So think about the thickness of the sauce, something like this. So we're going to kind of like drizzle this on. Boom. Just like that. And notice it keeps the height of the mesh. And we just add the mask. And once you do just a little bit there, that's fine. Let's just go to uh, mask properties, I believe. Wherever that is. Mask. And then go to boost. Like everything minus this like obnoxious uh, portion right here. So I'm gonna delete some of that. It's here. And then all we need is a subtool, extract, accept, copy, go back to our other tool. We have this like crazy weird mesh going on, but uh, to my eyes, that doesn't look too bad. Uh, first, we're gonna dynamesh everything, fuse them together. I'm gonna save the file per Eva's request. You have it. Will I texture use poly paint? I will not use poly paint. I will texture it. I actually don't think I've ever really used poly paint. The goat of poly paint, to my knowledge, is my boy Ian Robinson. Shout out to Ian Robinson. So, this looks perfect to me. Let's go ahead and polish smooth that sauce out a little bit. Um, and then the next thing we're gonna do, let's go surface noise. Increase the scale, strength, a little bit of focal shift maybe. Okay, mask by noise. And we're gonna inflate this a couple times. Uh, that should be for the most part decent. Let me take the contrast slider down a little bit. Mask by noise again. Actually, before I do that, let's go 360. Okay. 360. Just increase the resolution of the mesh real quick. I think something. I like the sloppy, sloppy sauce. And of course we have this stuff here that we don't need. So what I'm gonna do is, what did you say? 
There's a million different, you're right, literally the barnacles of the scene. We do not need. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I hear you, 3D hoist, 100%. Yes, every one of my past dreams are doing food, yes. So, uh, to get rid of this, would you guys have past dreams? Would um, any of you guys have any idea of how I would get rid of these chunks? So I could smooth them out, except because of our high re resolution, it's hard to... Uh, which I'm calling. So what I would probably do in this case is something kind of like mask pennant, just mask. At least once all those things are dark, just like that, we're going to color them a separate color and hide everything else. We're going to now reverse the selection. Delete hidden, and because we're in Dynamesh mode, all we gotta do is, uh, yeah. Now we could probably smooth. Um, but because it gives kind of harsh edges, we don't want that either. So let's mask those again. Maybe uh, blur out that mask. And then we're gonna go contrast down. And then any other weird areas that we see that are kind of like floaties, inflate that. Use the inflate brush to kind of make things right. Did you come up with the ravioli idea, Perp? Damn, Perp is on fire. He came up with the last one too. You're like, yeah, I don't want to brag. It's just, you know. <laughs> You're like, how do I, what do I say? What do I say? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Pity butt. Cool. Yeah. Pity butt. Dude, that would be hilarious if I started Twitch streaming. Anytime someone donated money, it just went, pity butt. Again, for those of you just joining, I'm talking to the Discord squadron. Um, and if you are interested, uh, the bird boy just arrived. Um, and if you are interested, uh, feel free to join. Um, and I think this is looking decent, so. Maybe a little bit of a... I think the noise on the ravioli... Well, actually, depending on how... Because you're right, there is some... Pocketing and grooves and stuff. Maybe maybe we could... I think, uh, I think you're right. Let's... Yeah, yeah. Let's go to geometry proxy pose. I think we can chill on the resolution, so maybe just a little bit. Let's go noise. And 
this noise will now be the pocketing. Now we can just go in here and very lightly And because we're in the proxy pose uh, thing, it's not gonna look as harsh, or at least it didn't. Let me smooth it out a little bit. Yeah, I use it sometimes when I'm using with like higher resolution meshes, but I wanna make bigger deformations in the uh, meshes, so now, if I disable proxy pose, it's got these little uh, indentations that are not too harsh. Kind of like the reference. Because um, if we were to do that pretty much just like they are now, it'd be like really harsh. And I guess we could have made that work, um, realistically speaking. I don't know. But it's a cool thing to show. Hey, yo. Cool. Okay. But that's for the most part it. I think uh, that's... Whoa. He does. Someone was born on the wrong side of the nest, hey, yo. You're like, that one cut deep. Cool. Pity bit, pity bit. Go. Oh. Um, and then depending on if we wanted to make, you know, the other stuff, I have assets that I've made uh, in cinema that I can probably place on top, like the, what's this up, basil? Oh yeah, basil. And uh, other elements like that. Even some chi, as Shani Mignon might say. Um, so we can maybe add that in later. But uh, if you guys want to see the rest of the process, we'll be in discord um i might finish that later but yeah good stream i feel like this wasn't that crazy i mean it was a nice little self-explanatory simple plate nice little ravioli had some variation in each one of these little guys we did poly grouping we did some sauce we did some transpose we did some cloth a little hard service for the plate and yeah so if you guys got out of it i'm gonna save real quick otherwise that was gonna get a little mad at me and uh yeah that's, uh, yes, all that stuff will be be added later. 3D Oist. Um, yes. So, guys, hope you had a great time. It was a pleasure. This is our fourth one down. And we'll see you in the next one. Later. It was pleasure.